Our second story out front, a theory of conspiracy from the NRA as opposed to a conspiracy theory. This is truly a theory of conspiracy because the pro-gun lobby says it's going to be closely watching the House vote tomorrow on whether to hold Attorney General Eric Holder in contempt of Congress. This drama, as you're aware, has been unfolding for months. After Holder failed to turn over documents related to the government's botched, fast and furious gun trafficking operation. So you may say, why is the NRA so passionately and intimately involved in this? Well, the organization claims that Fast and Furious began as part of an anti-gun agenda. You know, there have been theories out there that well, you know, that the Obama administration set this up and sold these guns to, to drug runners because they thought something bad would happen and then it would look bad and that would look bad for guns and then you could get gun control. Yes, theories like that. And they're going to consider tomorrow's vote when doling out their annual letter grades for members of Congress. And those letter grades are important. So far, at least four Democrats have signaled they will vote with Republicans. Kyle Layton is editor at Talking Points Memo. CNN contributor Roland Martin is with me and Republican strategist Hogan Gidley. Roland, let me start with you. 31 Democrats, Democrats last year signed a letter to President Obama expressing concern about the administration's response to Fast and Furious. Of those 31, 29 have received donations from the NRA. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to draw conclusions where it would be unwarranted or anything. Oh, but you can. <laughs> I mean, the bottom line is the NRA is an extremely powerful organization, and they basically uh, have threatened members of Congress here. I mean, you can call it that when they say, look, we're going to score this, and we're going to use this when it comes to our evaluations of who we support and who we give money to. And trust me, those Democrats, and, we, and look, you have many people, you have a lot of blue dog Democrats, conservative Democrats, they do not want to have to feel the wrath of the mm -hmm. NRA when it comes to television ads over the next four or five months. We might as well go ahead and just say it. Hogan, why is the NRA getting involved? I mean, this conspiracy of theories, this theory of conspiracies um, is a little bizarre. Right. Well, Roland, first of all, I mean, let, let, let's be honest. May, maybe these Democrats are actually voting the way their constituency would have them vote. Yeah, right. And the NRA is very popular among that constituency. <laughs> so that's that that that's the first thing. But the NRA does need to tread lightly here. I mean, this is a serious issue. It's about Eric Holder, in my opinion, and it's about whether he was being truthful to Congress or not. And someone lost his life. Uh, a border border agent for the United States lost their life over this. Hundreds of Mexicans did as well. I will say this about the NRA. This might be the only way this is relevant come November uh -huh. uh, for, for middle America. For people like us, this, this Eric Holder trial uh, or contempt hearing is going to be very important. We all watch it. We all care what's going on. But for middle America, who's really not paying attention the week before the 4th of July, the NRA stepping into this thing might be the only way it's relevant come November. Kyle, what do you think about that? Is the NRA going to be what makes this Eric Holder story matter for more people? Uh, I don't know about that too much. I mean, certainly, I mean, moving the NRA, the NRA moving this into the pol sort of political category by scoring it, um, it's it's certainly something that, uh, in, as polarized as this environment is, and even as interest groups are polarized, there's actually some opportunity for um, Democrats to, to sustain the NRA endorsement, and it's a very very important endorsement for a lot of like rural Democrats right. and and conservative to moderate. So when they actually get it, I think it's really important to them to really hold on to it. And right. so why why this is really important is when it gets scored, it's something that. Um, they're going to have to deal with really politically, like pretty much right away. Right, hey, so Aaron. Yeah, so yeah, Roland. Let's just be honest. The NRA can't stand this president. They don't like this attorney general, and also they despise the ATF. We can go all the way back to Waco uh, and the whole issue with the uh, Branch Davidian compound. And so the NRA. I mean, look at how they have effectively blocked a real leader to, uh, to lead the ATF. Uh, look how they uh, they attack them at every, at every moment. So the NRA does not want there to be a federal agency when it comes to the dealing with the issue of guns in this country. That's who they. They are so it's no shock they are involved in this case because they want to bring mm -hmm. this AG down and like you said these crazy conspiracy theories put them with the 9-11 truthers and the birthers and everyone else as total crackpots with these theories uh, Hogan what's your response to that I mean some of these theories I've heard are, are truly absurd Right. I mean, look, uh, there are so many things Roland touched on there for me to for me to respond to. Yeah, but, but what about the it, it theories? Right. You know, hold on. What, what about the specific issue of some of these theories that the Obama administration actually did this whole operation, hoping that one day it would cause a problem for guns and they could use that to get to gun control? I could think of a heck of a lot better right, ways right. to get look, the gun I, control. Right, right. And, and look, I, 
I, I, like I said, the NRA needs to tread very lightly here, but the, bot the bottom line is right. The NRA doesn't like this president. If you're, if you're a, a liberal, you don't like the NRA. If you're conservative, you do like the NRA, and that's just part of politics. It was a shrewd political move to try to make this, um, to try to connect these dots. If they are indeed connected, like mm -hmm. I said before, I don't think middle America is paying attention to this trial absent a smoking gun. Uh, uh, but in Pun November, intended. they sure will be if the yeah. NRA has something to say about well, it. Hogan, 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 what about Hogan. the... Hold say on. it, Hogan. Say it. They're, this theory is crazy. Just go ahead and admit it. I don't know if the theory is crazy or not. I'm okay, just waiting to see all right, more facts on, on the NRA. In. But they're, they're putting it out there, and they're making this thing relevant for November, and that's what they're yeah. trying to do. And no, they don't like this president. That's pretty obvious. So, Kyle, what do you think about the three Democrats on uh, who, who got donations from the NRA this cycle but did not sign that letter to the president about Fast and Furious? Are they going to – how important will losing the NRA support be? Do you think they'll lose it? Well, I mean, I, don't, I couldn't tell you that. I couldn't tell you if they're going to lose it or not. But – that's the definition of walking a fine line when you're talking about conservative to, conservative to moderate Democrats and yeah. how they sort of deal with this NRA endorsement. It's, it's something that, you know, they want desperately, but it's also a really big problem if their opponent, who if they're running in a moderate mm -hmm. to conservative district, their opponent is probably primed and really ready to take that NRA, NRA endorsement right. and, and tout it really well. So if, you know, they want to keep it, but they also want to make sure that they're maintaining their ties, with, certainly with, the, with, the Dem uh, with President Obama and yeah. the Democrats sort of generally. It's going to be a tough choice for them. Thanks to all three. We appreciate it. And next